Hey everybody, my name is Storm and this is a redo of the countdown timer tutorial I've done earlier after I got some fair feedback. And with this said, let's just jump right into it. First of all, we need a way to actually display the information we wanna make. Uh, you can use your own UI, but for this, I'm actually gonna make a new one. So I'm gonna make a UI folder. In this folder, I'm gonna create a new widget blueprint which I'm gonna prefix with WBP for widget blueprint, underscore um, um, count down. There we go. And after I create this blueprint, I'm gonna open it up, realign a bit my, realign my viewport a bit and drag in a vertical box, a horizontal box, Oops, let's just drag it in right. And a spacer. This vertical box I'm gonna make to fill my screen. The spacer I'm also gonna set that to fill and also gonna set this to fill. And on the top one, on the horizontal box, I set the fill to 0 0.1. So it stays on the top there very neatly. And then after that, I'm gonna take a scale box into that horizontal box, set this to fill. And in that scale box, I'm going to put my text. So my text is always neatly top center and it scales automatically with the screen. So I just set it to zero, like to a, um, I just set the text to zero, zero, colon zero, zero, just to have a preview of how it will look later. You can also play around with it and uh, set it up how you like it. It's just how I will do mine. Then I'm going to take my text block and actually going to rename it to text block underscore current time. And I make sure I have is variable text. Then in over in my graph, I want to make a new function and I'm going to call it update time. And in our inputs, I want to add a integer value, which is going to be our new time. After I've done this, I want to create a secondary function, which is going to be called format numbers. What this function will do is actually append a zero or set it to zero, zero if the value is zero. So we have this neat little effect. So when we have, for example, uh, six seconds, it will display like this. If we have 10 seconds, it will display like this. And if it is zero, zero, it would display like this. So in our format numbers, we want to first of all have an input and a output. The input is our current time. The output is, is, in in string. Actually, let me rename this to number to format. And what we do in here is, first of all, we want to check if it's more than nine. If it's more than nine, we want to run to a select and we pretty much just want to pass it value on because if it's above nine, we don't need to prefix or suffix anything. Well, we don't need to prefix anything. Then we want another select, oops, not a select string. We want another select right here. And this will check if our number is equal, equal to zero. If our number is equal equal to zero, we want to just set it to zero. And for the last one, we want a oops, we want a string append, so we can append something to the current string. In my case, it will be a zero. So if it's less than ten, it will append a zero. If it's zero, it will append. Uh, it will set it to zero zero. And if it's more than nine, it will just set it to the value we have. So then in update time, we wanna 
do um, math really quickly to actually determine how many minutes and how many seconds we have. For this, I'm gonna take my modulo of this number, which in our case will be 60 for 60 seconds. And we want a minus over here because we want to minus the value. So we get a straight um, dividable uh, value because modulo gets the rest of the, uh, of the, of the division. And so we then divide this, oops, not multiply, divide this integer by 60. And now we have our minutes and our seconds. And so we can just call our format numbers. Oops, and let's make this just pure, just like this. And then we can just call a append. Oops, that's the wrong append again then we have this we put a colon in between and just like this we pretty much have our string formatted so we can then take our text block and just set our text oops not tool text set text and the one we want is this one so let me just connect this up here and now we're pretty much done with the widget So the next thing we want to make is free, um, free um, blueprints. So I'm going to make a new folder and call this blueprints. The first one of which will be a game mode. Game mode. And I'm going to call this just simply GM underscore countdown. This will just pretty much deal with all the other classes we're going to create now. The next one will be just a simple character to do character and we're going to call it character countdown. And the last thing will be a game state, game state. And we're just going to call this GS underscore countdown. So the thing we want to do first now is go in our game mode countdown, go in the details panel. And let me just make this a bit bigger. Do drag this over here, scale it a bit up, and take my game state. Game state, and our character right in here, so they get loaded on begin play uh, on startup. So, in our character, let's open my character on possession, because uh, if we would just set, had set this up with begin play, it could maybe happen that it, the character is not yet initialized. So here we are gonna call our event possessed and add a custom event, which we're gonna call OC underscore at timer widget. This uh, this event we need to set to run on only client and we need to make it reliable. If we don't make it reliable, it will not be called on the second client. So we're gonna take our C add timer widget. And in here, we wanna get our player controller. We wanna create widget. The widget in question will just be the widget blueprint countdown we just created. We want to promote this to a variable and which I'm just going to call ref underscore timer display. And after that, we just want to add to viewport. This is pretty much all we have to do in our character. So we can now move over to our game state countdown. And what we want to do on begin play is we want to set a timer 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 by function name and for this we need to now make a function which I'm pretty much just gonna call increase count with this new function I'm just gonna really quickly right click and rename so I can just get the name and just copy paste this in here our time, because we work with seconds, uh, I'm just going to put it at one second. And we want to set this to looping. 
and our return value we want to promote to a variable because we will do some other stuff I will explain down the line. So we're gonna call this variable just timer handler th and then counter. After I've done this, I wanna create go into my increase counter. And I wanna create two variables, one of which is replicated. So I wanna make an integer variable which is gonna be our time time counter. And we want to make a replicated variable which is gonna be our time checker. Uh, well, it will be a wrap notify variable. So let's just set this to wrap notify. And every time this timer ticks, we want to increment this by one. Then we want to check. So we want to every nine. So if every time we reach the number nine, we want to check on the client if the timer is still synced. So if I take the modulo of this and do, 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 the modulo needs to be 10. And if that number equal equals to nine, we want to do something. But before we want that thing only to happen on server. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a has authority check in here. I can actually use has authority. There we go. And only on authority, we want to actually run the stuff behind here. Otherwise, we want to just call something we're going to create in a second. So we have our branch here. And then we have our timer counter. And we want to set our timer checker. So when we reach the number nine, we want to call our timer checker and actually check um, if the value is equal equal to sh what it should be, which we cannot just do in a second in another function. But first, we want a new function, which we're just going to call, call set counter, in which we deal with uh, checking if the player is valid and all that stuff. So what I'm going to first do is I want to get my player controller and we want to get our control pawn. There you go. And we want to just check is valid. Here we just check if our player controller pawn is valid. If it's valid, we want to uh, cast to doo -doo -doo, character countdown. And then we want to have a reference to set character so we don't always have to cast to this. So we can just call this ref underscore character. And then we can check if in our ref character, our timer display is valid. Because we uh, when we want to add something to this, we need to check that our timer display is valid. Otherwise we can run into issues. So we want to check is valid. And if it's valid, we want to call update time. And our new time will be our time counter. So now we have a ref character. And what we can just simply do here is we take our ref character and we check is valid. If the character will be able to unpossess, uh, you would need to do some things a bit different. But this should also work if the player gets a new, like if the player controller has a new, like if the character, the old one dies or gets destroyed and the player controller has a new character, this should still work. So with this, I can just drag it over here and just connect this up. But if you, for example, are able to change a character, I highly recommend just um, adding another function which will pretty much resets the current character and you just call this and it fixes the current own character. Okay. The set countdown will just pretty much deal with uh, inc incrementing our current counter. So let's go back to our counter 
And now we need to add three, uh, three times. Once if our modulo is nine, once if we don't have a 40, and once after our uh, time checker here. Good. Then we're done with our increased counter and set counter, but the last thing we still have to do is our unwrap time checker. So what we want to do is we want to get our time counter and our time checker, and we want to check if it is equal to each other. Well, if it's not equal to each other, I apologize. Because we want to check if they're not equal. We could also have equal, equal and dragged off the false, but this is easier. So if this is not equal to each other, we want to fix that. So we want to take our time checker and set our time counter. This way it prevents the client from desyncing. So we can now get our time handler counter and we can clear an invalid timer by handle. And then we can pretty much restart our timer. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna copy paste this in here. And then we can call set counter afterwards. So if we now get a simple map, we can just use our map I have here. And we set the game mode to set game mode we just created and click play, it should work. And we see, um, we count up. Right now you see we are out of sync because the client loaded uh, after the server, but now we're in sync because we reached the number nine. And with this, we're pretty much done. We can just really quickly, one last thing I wanna really quickly show. If I take the time down here to 0 0.1 on both timers, and just let it run real quickly. So we can see how it looks if it actually turns over. So if we reach a minute, we can see it now properly displays a minute. And yeah, it should be synced on all clients. With this said, I hope you all enjoyed the updated version of the tutorial. If you have any comments about it, or if you think I've done something wrong, please let me know. Uh, I like to have proper feedback on these tutorials and I don't want to accidentally teach wrong things about Unreal Engine. But with that said, I wish you all have a fantastic day and goodbye.